Today I want to share with you the top 10 Aldi healthy foods you need to buy now. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. If at any time you want to jump ahead in this video, I'll have detailed timestamps in the description underneath the video, as well as in the pinned comment. I'll also have a link there that'll take you over to the blog post that'll correspond with this video on my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel. Well, often as we go into holiday time, we're very focused on buying lots of goodies, and that's a good thing, because this is the time of year we want to treat ourselves. But also stocking up on some healthy foods is a very good idea as well. The ones that I'm going to share with you can certainly be incorporated into any meals that you're making this time of year, but then you'll be well stocked in January when you want to specifically focus on those healthy foods. Number one, olives and olive oil. Now the good news is there's been extensive scientific research done on olive oil and there's plenty of information that you can read online about it but I think so many of us have heard what a good heart healthy fat olive oil is. It's also rich in antioxidants and it has anti-inflammatory properties as well as a whole host of wonderful things for our good health. Now the nice thing about olives is that although less concentrated on an individual basis than olive oil, they also offer fiber and it gives you something nice to snack on when you feel hungry. And for all the items that I'm going to talk about today that I bought at Aldi, I want you to know that in the blog post that will correspond with this video, I'll have a lot of information about each individual food and its health benefits as well as links to scientific studies where you can read more. Now something that I really love, and I don't know if this is at every Aldi around the country, but as I've shared with you in the past, I live in the Texas Hill Country and we have what are called <laughs> olive ranches. There are a lot of people here who grow olives and they produce olive oil and our Aldi carries the Texas olive oil. Now, I don't know if your Aldi does, but if it does, I highly recommend Texas olive oil. It's wonderful. But they also have this organic extra virgin olive oil, so this is a good option as well. And since this is one of their lines, they're simply Nature line, uh, I'm sure that this is in most of their stores. And all of these were very affordable. And when it comes to olives, they have such a huge selection. Some of my favorites are these green olives stuffed with garlic. Oh my gosh, I have to be careful because I could eat this in one setting and then it's going to be coming, the garlic's going to be coming out of my pores. But how nutritious is that? And I will tell you, a couple of years ago when I was under the weather, uh, both my son and I were eating these olives because it was such a great way to get garlic into our diets. And we know that garlic is a wonderful uh, antiviral, antimicrobial, microbial, antibacterial, you know, all these things that help fight infection. Uh, then they've got one stuffed with jalapenos, and then this one, oh, another one, garlic. <laughs> you can see I like that, I bought two. And they have just the traditional green olives uh, with the pimentos. They've got black olives in the can, and they even have these wonderful Kalamata olives, the dark olives that are just delicious. These are especially nice in a salad with some feta cheese. So number one, olive oil and olives. You've got to pick some of these up. Number two, coconut milk. Now this is a boon to anybody who can't take dairy, but this is also good for the rest of us. Coconut milk as well as coconut cream, if you can find that at your Aldi, are very high in what are known as MCT oils. And these are excellent for brain health, but they also may be linked to helping with weight control. And again, with everything I'm going to be talking about today, there are a whole host of scientific studies, and I will share some of that information with you. Uh, but be sure to check the blog post over on my website uh, where you can really read about this in detail. 
Coconut milk can be used in a variety of recipes and it can also be used in things like coffee and tea in place of cream or half and half if you don't use dairy. It's also wonderful to add to smoothies. But there have been a number of studies that have shown that incorporating coconut milk and coconut cream into our diets can help reduce inflammation, that's what I'm reading here, and fight viruses and bacteria. So this is definitely something that we want to have on our pantry shelves. Number three, figs. Dried fruit in general is packed with nutrients. And it's kind of why I have raisins tucked in behind here, since this is sort of a dried fruit category. Raisins are very high in calcium, iron, potassium, and potassium. And potassium is something we often don't have enough of in our diets. We get, tend to get a lot of sodium, but not necessarily a lot of potassium. And so that's why I had raisins tucked in back here. But we're gonna focus on the, on the figs. But if you shop at Aldi, they've got the bulk size of raisins, plus they have these cute little individual boxes, which are great for kids' lunches. But I wanted to spend a little time talking about figs because figs are extremely nutrient dense. A small little fig is rich in so many vitamins and minerals. One of the important vitamins that figs are rich in is B6. And B vitamins are water soluble vitamins, meaning that they're flushed out of our system on an ongoing basis. They don't build up like fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E, so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure that you're always giving your body a good supply of B vitamins, because B vitamins cover a whole host of things in, in, our, in our bodies. However, one of their jobs is to nourish our nervous system. And in today's world, we certainly need our nervous systems nourished. But another nutrient that figs are rich in, which we often are deficient in, as well as the foods in our modern diets are deficient in, and that's copper. And making sure that we have sufficient copper, the mineral copper, in our diet, in an appropriate amount, in a food amount, no need to be taking supplements. You can often take too much when you take supplements. You want to get your vitamins and minerals as much as possible from your foods, especially your nutrient-dense foods. And why is copper important? Copper is very important to hair growth. Now I will share what I'm reading here is that copper also has many, it's involved in many bodily processes, including the formation of our blood cells, connective tissue, and our neurotransmitter system. However, I think as ladies and men too, we often focus on our hair and how is our hair growing. And often if we don't have enough copper in our diet, we may find that our hair suffers. So make sure that you pick up some figs and keep them on your pantry shelf and enjoy them as a nice snack. Number four, canned fish and chicken. Now canned chicken is great to have on hand because it's rich in protein and it makes easy soups, easy stews, chicken salad, just rinse this really well. I know some of you have said, oh, it's kind of like tuna fish. If you rinse it really, really well, you'll find that it kind of brings back it being a little more like chicken, uh, but it's great in casseroles. And so you can't go wrong with this. It's a high protein food and that's excellent. However, well, first of all, I just want to mention the tuna fish. Tuna is another great source of protein. Uh, I like to go easy on tuna because you always do need to keep in mind about the mercury. However, this is the chunk light, which is a lot lower in mercury than the albacore and the other tunas like that. Uh, this is also a nice uh, line caught. Uh, so this is, you don't have to worry that the other fish were being caught in the nets and so on and so forth. So this this these are two good options for protein. But for your true nutrient dense foods that are really healthy, you want to look for your sardines and your pink salmon. Both of these, and this is wild Alaskan pink salmon, both of these are rich in protein, 
but they're also very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which are wonderful for our hearts and our brains. They're also both very rich in vitamins and minerals and specifically calcium because they contain the little bones from the salmon and in the sardines. Now, nothing to worry about. The bones are edible and they lit literally will just crumble in your mouth. But those bones are rich in calcium and they're a wonderful way to incorporate calcium into your diet if you're not a huge fan of eating dairy or you just don't eat a lot of dairy for various reasons, uh, poss possibly lactose intolerant and things like that. These can become your best friend. Now, I know some, now this you can do crab, uh, you can do salmon cakes with, I was gonna say crab cakes, you can do salmon cakes with this. You can do wonderful salmon casseroles, sort of like a tuna noodle casserole, but use salmon instead, it's delicious. And I have a lovely recipe, recipe for you on how to make salmon cakes that are so tasty that even if you have people in your family who say, oh, I don't like salmon, they're gonna love these salmon cakes. And any recipe I mention, I'll be sure to link to that uh, in the description uh, underneath this video. And if I ever run out, run out of room in the description, I'll always have everything in the pinned comment. Now, I do wanna spend a minute just to talk about sardines. Number one, at Aldi's, they have a variety of sardines that you can pick. What I recommend is finding those that are packed in water. One of their sardine products is packed in soybean oil. And in our traditional foods kitchens, that tends to be an oil that we want to avoid because it's highly processed. But the good news is they've got them packed in water. I believe they may also have them packed in mustard as well. But I like the ones that are packed in water the best because I use sardines to make a very specific recipe. And if you're thinking that you're the kind of person who doesn't like sardines, then you are going to love this recipe. And it makes me so happy because many of you who sit thought or told me you didn't like sardines and then tried the recipe that I share, you came back to me and you said, wow, I think I like sardines now. And if you've got my cookbook, the Modern Pioneer Cookbook, the sardines recipe is in here. Now, it's also on my website and my YouTube channel. You can actually watch me making it. But I'll show you the picture here in the book. Now, if you've got the cookbook, you can go to page 206, and it's called Sardines and Pickled Red Onions and Citrus Chimichurri. This is so tasty. You are gonna really love this. I kind of jazzed it up a little from the recipe that I have on my website and on my YouTube channel, but those are very similar. So you can try those, but if you have the cookbook, you can try this too. You can even maybe take a screenshot uh, if you don't have the book. Uh, but I hope that you'll consider getting this book. I think you're gonna absolutely love it if you don't already have it. It's truly your manual that'll walk you through step by step for how to create a traditional foods kitchen. And the pick the photographs in it are lovely. And I've shared a lot of family stories in here. And I think that you will find this very helpful to have on your bookshelf. So of these four options, if you only pick up two things, definitely get the wild caught Alaskan pink salmon and the sardines in water. And if you're just going for one, then I highly recommend the sardines and then try that sardines recipe. I think you're gonna be very happy. Number five, mushrooms. And don't worry, even if they're just these little white button mushrooms. I have a video where I talk with you about all the benefits of mushrooms and how even your just very simple little plain white button mushroom is actually very nutritious. And in that video, I show you how to make a mushroom broth if you're ever able to find some nice fresh mushrooms to use to make that. However, canned mushrooms are gonna be one of your best friends to have on your pantry shelf. They're very healthy for you and they have that nice meaty texture and that flavor that's often referred to as, and if I'm pronouncing this correctly, umami. You know, it's just got that meaty texture, meaty flavor, and can be wonderful uh, for those meatless meals you're making. And especially with the price of meat being so high, having substitutes that have that taste texture 
and uh, you know, not just the taste but the texture as well, somewhat similar to meat, uh, can be very helpful in your recipes, especially like if you're making a tomato sauce and but you're not doing a bolognese, so you're not using the chopped meat or ground beef and the sausage and so on and so forth. Putting in a couple of cans of mushrooms can be wonderful, very tasty and very healthy. I'll share with you that mushrooms contain, and this is all mushrooms. Now, yes, do like the creminis and then the larger portobellos. The creminis are like the baby portobellos. They often call them baby bellas. And, and your portobellas and then the shiitakes, I mean, the whole host of mushrooms, they're all very nutritious. And it's just a matter of, you know, on the continuum, so to speak, of nutrition. Uh, but mushrooms contain high amounts of selenium. That's another mineral, not unlike copper, that is often lacking in our diets and lacking in our modern day foods. Uh, but mushrooms come to our rescue for that. They're also high in vitamin D, vitamin B6, which we already talked about. And the good news is, and again, I'll link to all these different studies so you can read more, but selenium can help prevent cell damage in our bodies. That's very important because cell damage is basically oxidation. We want to avoid oxidation and we want to protect ourselves and keep ourselves happy because damaged cells are what lead to disease. And anytime we can avoid disease, all the better. Uh, and vitamin D helps with cell growth. So you've got the selenium protecting against cell damage, then you've got the vitamin D, which is helping with cell growth. And vitamin C also helps our bodies form red blood cells, uh, which also keep us hearty and strong and healthy. And all of these nutrients in mushrooms help to maintain a healthy immune system. And as we go into cold and flu season, there's nothing more important than maintaining a healthy immune system. So mushrooms, definitely put them on your grocery list when you head to Aldi and be sure to stock them in your pantry. Number six, pineapple. And specifically, canned pineapple packed in its own juice. Now certainly, if you can find fresh pineapple in season, that's great. And I also show you how to make pineapple scrap vinegar from the rinds. But pineapple's not always in season. And sometimes the season for fresh pineapple can be very short. So buying some canned pineapple at Aldi, which has a wonderful selection of pineapple, is a very good idea. And all of them are packed in their own juice. And they give you a great variety because you can get the chunks, <laughs> you can get the crushed, and you can also get the rings. So you can use them in a lot of different meal preparations as well as a lot of different desserts. Plus, if you decide that you want to just use the pineapple and reserve the juice, the pineapple juice is a wonderful meat tenderizer. You don't need to be worrying about buying any of those meat tenderizers at the grocery store. Or if you have a very tough piece of meat and you're thinking, oh, how can I really help tenderize this? Just marinate it in pineapple juice. You're going to be amazed at how tender it will be. Pineapple is rich in an enzyme called, and if I pronounce this correctly, bromelain. And bromelain is what's helping tenderize the meat, but it's also helping you digest your food. So if after a heavy meal, you serve a little pineapple or even before as a little bit of an appetizer, bromelain, the bromelain in the pineapple can help you better digest your food. And why is digestion so important? Well, number one, we don't wanna have indigestion. We wanna have good digestion. But when we properly digest our food, we can then assimilate all of the nutrients from it. So if you're eating, say, a nutrient-rich or nutrient-dense meal, say you're enjoying some of the sardines, but maybe you find that your digestion has slowed down as you've aged, or you just have general digestive problems, adding a little pineapple into your diet can really be beneficial. You'll find that you may digest your food easier, you may not get indigestion, and you will also then absorb the nutrients from the food that you're eating. Also, bromelain, the enzyme bromelain, 
can help relieve aches and pains. So if you eat a little pineapple on an empty stomach or enjoy a little bit of the pineapple juice on an empty stomach, that's when it works best at helping you relieve your aches and pains. So these are all very interesting things to keep in mind and to read more about and consider keeping some pineapple on, on your shelf, buying it fresh in season when you can, but making sure you've got some canned pineapple in your pantry as well. Pineapple is also rich in vitamin C, always good to have that in our diets. And it's also rich in a mineral called manganese. And again, like the copper and some of the other minerals we've been talking about, these foods, uh, the modern day foods are often somewhat deficient in important minerals that we need. Now, often they're just trace minerals. We don't need a lot, but because they're trace minerals and they do tend to be in small amounts, sometimes have just been exhausted more or less in the soil and therefore don't, are not always contained in many of the fresh fruits and vegetables that we eat. So when we can find fresh fruits and vegetables or canned fruits and vegetables, that do contain these, do contain these nutrients, all the better. So having the foods that are nutrient rich and nutrient dense in the vitamins and minerals that we need, whether they're fresh fruits and vegetables or some of the canned fish we talked about earlier, these are the important foods that we want to eat for a healthy diet and make sure that we have on our pantry shelf. So when you're at Aldi, be sure to look at the variety of pineapple they have and add some to your, to your shopping cart. Now I've got a little bonus recommendation hiding behind the pineapple and that's sour cherries. And these are lovely because these are the specially selected line at Aldi. And if you shop at Aldi on a regular basis, you know they have some lovely products under this specialty line. But the reason that I picked these sour cherries, now they are packed in syrup, but it's just a sugar syrup and you can always rinse that off best you can. But sour cherries are not always easy to come by, but they're extremely nutritious. And that's why I wanted to include them when I talked about the pineapple. They also, these are rich in B vitamins. We've talked about B6 and just B vitamins in general and how good they are for our nervous system. They also are rich in manganese, a mineral, copper, another mineral that we've discussed, and they're also rich in magnesium. Now, along with the potassium that we talked about earlier and the calcium, you also wanna make sure that you're getting sufficient magnesium in your diet because magnesium and calcium work together to make strong, strong bones. And one without the other doesn't work as well. So make sure that you're getting some magnesium in your diet and what a delicious way with, I, I love sour cherries, I will confess. And sometimes you might find them dried, they're very tasty, uh, but if you can't, I usually see these at Aldi, so hopefully you'll see them at your Aldi as well. And I also just wanted to mention that not unlike the pineapple, the sour cherries are also high in vitamin C. And vitamin C is always good to have in our diet. You know, it's good for so many bodily processes, and we often think of vitamin C uh, as something that we want, you know, during cold and flu season to help fight off infection. But vitamin C also works very closely uh, with collagen and in helping our skin create collagen and help reduce wrinkles. So if you're taking your bone broth, which should be that you make homemade that I've showed you in many recipes how to do, and it's very gelatinous and, and no, I know this, I get this question a lot. It doesn't look like jello when you're eating it or, or sipping it or using it in a soup and stew. When you warm it up, it becomes liquid, but you want a gelatinous bone broth because the cartilage from the bones is very rich in collagen. And when you slow cook it in making a bone broth, that collagen melts down and gelatin is basically cooked collagen. And this is such a wonderful thing to do because even chicken bone broth, I know beef bones sometimes can be a little expensive today because of the popularity of bone broth, but use your chicken carcass. And if you're able to get some chicken feet as well, throw those in, 
throw in the chicken backs, throw in the chicken necks, whatever you can get your hands on. Those are the type of things that are all very rich in cartilage and will make a gelatinous bone broth. I have a video where I show you how to make a whole bunch of bone broth, chicken bone broth specifically, uh, for about $2. So this can be done in a reasonable way. And then you don't have to buy all those expensive collagen powders. Gee, I see people buying these and they're like $50. It's absolutely ridiculous and unnecessary. And it's more important to, uh, in essence, drink your collagen uh, in a natural form that you've made homemade than some powder. How, how was that made? How has it been dehydrated? What exactly was done to it? Is it highly processed? Is it damaged? These are all the questions that run through my head when I see those collagen powders. So I recommend make your bone broth and then make sure that your diet is also rich in calcium. Now, some of the calcium leaches out of the bones and that's why we put in some, you know, like apple cider vinegar or a fortified wine, whatever you like using when you make bone broth. And, if you've not seen my bone broth videos, I'll definitely link to the playlist in the description underneath this video. But I show you many, many ways to make all kinds of bone broth. Some of the calcium is leached out of the bones, but you want to make sure that you're also incorporating foods that have magnesium. And that's why we often add the vegetable scraps or even other vegetables to our bone broth so that we're bringing in those additional minerals. But what a wonderful way with these delicious cherries, if you like cherries, to be incorporating the magnesium into your diet along with the calcium and the collagen via the gelatin that you're getting uh, from your bone broth. And there, you can go on the internet and you can search, and I'll share some of this in the corresponding blog post. There are a whole host of foods that are rich in magnesium. It's not difficult to obtain magnesium in our diet. We just need to find these foods that are rich in magnesium and make sure that we are incorporating them on a regular basis along with our calcium rich foods. And also before we move on to number seven, I just wanna mention that foods like pineapple, cherries, Fruits and vegetables are very rich in fiber. And fiber, again, helps keep us regular, helps move food through our digestive system. So we also want to make sure that we are getting, that we are getting appropriate amounts of fiber. And things like pineapple and cherries are a tasty way to incorporate fiber into our diets. Also, before we move on to number seven, I want to mention one thing to you. I have a very sweet friend, I think so many of you know her and have heard me talk about her, uh, is my sweet friend Michelle, who's over at Chocolate Box Cottage. And if you've not had a chance to visit with Michelle, I hope you will. She has a wonderful, wonderful YouTube channel all about many aspects of homemaking and homesteading, cooking. It's really a lovely channel. But Michelle introduced me. Now, I don't know this other person personally, but Michelle introduced me to a channel called A Simple Season. And it has a lovely lady on the channel, and I believe her name is Lisa. And Lisa lives in Canada, and she has a great video about eight healthy foods that she buys living up in Canada. Now, it's not specifically Aldi or anything like that. It's what's local to her area. And I think it's an excellent video, and I will be sure to link to that in the description and in the pinned comment below so that you can go visit with Lisa over at A Simple Season. Like Michelle, she also has a lovely YouTube channel. Number seven, tomato products. Aldi has a huge selection of tomato products. They have all kinds of canned tomatoes. We've got diced tomatoes here. Uh, also diced tomatoes, this one has some herbs in it, and we've got uh, also the fire roasted, those are very tasty, and we've got some tomato paste here, and then a huge selection of salsas. I mean, it's just amazing how many choices you can have when you shop for salsa at Aldi. Plus, they also have diced tomatoes with green chilies, and this is great if you make your own, uh, like a homemade, you know, instead of using Velveeta, you get your own cheese and you work with that and make your own cheese sauce and then you add in some of your 
tomato with green chilies, making your own homemade queso that's not highly processed. This is wonderful to have on hand. Plus, as I said, they have all kinds of salsa. They've got medium, mild, chunky. They've got organic, hot, mild. And this one's a medium. Uh, it's just amazing. And then this like nice specialty brand that I mentioned, they've got a four peppers salsa. It's tomato based, but then it's got different peppers in it. And they even have the tomatillo. So you can't go wrong. You're going to find plenty of tomato products at Aldi. But now let's talk about why we want to be buying tomato products. First of all, and you may have heard a lot about this, but tomatoes, and if I'm pronouncing this correctly, is extremely high in lycopene. And lycopene is an antioxidant. And all varieties of tomatoes have been linked to a whole host of health benefits. And specifically when they're prepared in ways where they're cooked. The cooking actually helps release the lycopene and make it more bioavailable to our digestive systems. So using canned or bottled tomato products, you know, a lot of tomato sauces will come in bottles uh, or enjoying salsas. This is a wonderful way uh, to incorporate lycopene into our bodies. But tomatoes also offer a lot more. They are a great source, like the pineapple and the cherries and some of the foods we've talked about today, they're a great source of vitamin C. They're also rich in potassium. And as I shared with you earlier, we're always, we always seem to be good on sodium, but sometimes we're low on potassium. And incorporating potassium into our diet, all the better, because we always want to have a nice potassium and sodium balance. Tomatoes are also high in folate, folic acid, and this is in the B vitamin family. And again, water soluble, if we can get B vitamins on a regular basis, all the better for us. And folate is specifically important for normal tissue growth and cell function. And there have been a number of studies that have shown that it's particularly important for pregnant women. And I don't know about you, but when I was pregnant and I went to my doctor, she made sure to give me vitamins that contained folic acid. Now, I'm not a doctor, not even close, but if you are pregnant, that is something you may want to discuss with your obstetrician and find out if you are getting enough folate in your diet. Now, I have lots of recipes for you using both fresh and canned tomatoes, and I'll be sure to link to all of those. And certainly, if you have a nice bumper crop in your summers when you're harvesting your garden or you're getting a good buy uh, at the farmer's market or even at the grocery store, and you can get those nice Italian plum tomatoes and or the Roma tomatoes and you want to make uh, your own marinara, I have a recipe where I show you how to do that. And it's relatively easy to do. I also show you how to home can your own tomatoes. And I'll be sure to include all of those links below. Now I've got some pasta sitting over here. And the reason I have that is because we are talking about tomatoes. <laughs> and pasta and tomato go, tomatoes go very well together. But I wanted to show you this particular brand uh, that I found at Aldi. This is, sorry I'm making a lot of noise, but this is a lovely brand. And they had the shells, which are nice. And they also had the penne, uh, which is wonderful uh, as well, especially when making a nice baked pasta dish. But the reason I wanted to share these with you is, and if you've been with me a while, you've probably already heard me talk about this, but whenever you buy pasta, you always want to look for pasta that's made from durum semolina. Semolina is more nutritious than all-purpose flour. And if you're making pasta at home, you want to search out semolina as opposed to using all-purpose flour to make a truly nutritious uh, spaghetti or noodles, whatever you're making. But also, pasta made with durum semolina is fairly common and easy to find, and Aldi has a great selection. And I especially liked these. These are uh, mentioned right on the package, bronze cut. That refers to how the pasta is like made and then cut uh, in Italy, and it affects the 
texture when you go to cook your pasta so that it can be truly al dente. And that's how you want to cook your pasta, that when you, you bite into it, uh, you feel that it's a, there's a bite to it. It's not mushy. And so I was so pleased to see these. I think these are going to be a wonderful addition for anyone's pantry. They are made from Durham semolina, and they can often make a very easy dinner uh, when you are in a rush. And if you've got your canned tomatoes on hand or some pre-made uh, tomato sauce, you can have a quick meal that's nutritious because semolina, as I shared, is more nutritious than all-purpose flour. Semolina is a byproduct of the durum flour milling process. So when durum flour is milled uh, and the bran and the germ and all of that is removed from it, uh, the semolina is what is known as the middlings. It's not all bran, it's not all germ. It's a little bit of a combination of some of the durum flour with a little bit of the bran, a little bit of the germ, just the, what they call the middlings. And like so many things in history, nothing goes to waste. And it was discovered that middlings, durum semolina middlings made really great pasta. And so that I, I highly recommend uh, that you keep some of this in your pantry along with these wonderful nutritious tomato products. Because even though, yes, just eating pasta all the time, even with durum semolina, or we're going to talk about rice a little later, these in themselves are not nutrient dense, or I, I wouldn't even say they're necessarily nutrient rich foods, uh, foods that are you know, eat larger amounts and have vitamins. Nutrient dense refers to small amounts of food that contain a lot of vitamins and minerals versus nutrient rich foods like say kale. You have to eat a lot of kale. You, have you ever buy like a whole bunch of kale and cook it down and it's basically a tablespoon? <laughs> you know, it, it's nutrient rich uh, in that it does contain a lot of vitamins and minerals. It's just not a dense food. You have to eat a lot of it to uh, obtain all of the vitamins, vitamins and minerals. However, foods like pasta, foods like rice, and I'm talking about white rice uh, because it's more shelf stable than brown. Brown rice goes rancid very quickly. Uh, even if it, even when we store it well, it's just the nature of rice. Uh, but white rice and pasta, these things make wonderful vehicles to help us incorporate more nutritious foods into our diet. Pasta helps us incorporate a lot of tomato products into our food. Um, white rice helps us incorporate broth and butter and the minerals from sea salt because you can cook your white rice in broth. And we'll talk more about this later, but you can cook your white rice in broth with butter and sea salt. Now you've created a much more nutrient rich meal. You've not created one that's just void of nutrition because in place of the water you used your broth or your bone broth and you've also added some fat to help absorb all those nutrients. Fat always helps our bodies absorb nutrients. That's why you could eat carrots all your life and if all you ate was carrots you still wouldn't be absorbing all of the beta carotene that is in carrots because in order to absorb nutrients from our vegetables, we need to include some fat. And that goes for pretty much all of our foods. That's why many foods in nature naturally are a combination of lower fat foods, like maybe the lower part of the milk and the cream on top they go together. An egg yolk and an egg white, they go together because the fat in these different foods helps us absorb all of the nutrients overall in the food we're eating as well as foods that may not have much fat in them but need fat in order for our body to absorb the nutrients. So that's always something important to keep in mind. So having some pasta on your shelf as long as you've got some tomatoes too you have a quick and easy meal and one that's going to be rich in lycopene, a wonderful antioxidant. Number eight, coffee and tea, both caffeinated and herb tea. 
First, let's take a minute to talk about coffee. You know I love coffee. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't drink a lot. I usually have one cup, maybe two in the morning, but I really enjoy it. And I was very happy to learn uh, with what I will share here with you and also over uh, on my website is that there are some studies. Now, there's a lot of research that's been done on coffee and tea, which we'll talk about in a minute. But there, there's always ongoing research about coffee and about the health benefits. Yes, the coffee that I'm sharing with you here is caffeinated, and I know some people like to avoid caffeine. I understand that completely. But if you do drink coffee and you like caffeinated coffee, there are some studies, and it's on, these are ongoing, but they could, coffee could possibly support the brain. They could support brain health. And so we'll see what comes of this in the future as scientists continue to study coffee, but it may actually help to protect us against what they call neurogenerative disorders. So something to keep in mind. Uh, but they found that, you know, they're, they're, they started with animals and now they're working forward on doing these studies uh, with individuals. And they found that people who tended to drink caffeinated coffee did have lower risks of neurodegenerative diseases, diseases of the brain. So I thought that was just fascinating, and I'll continue to keep my eye on that, and I'll definitely uh, come back to you uh, with more information on that as I learn, and you can certainly read the studies, which I'll link to as well, in, uh, in the blog post that corresponds with this video. But another thing that interests me, and this is uh, kind of somewhat related to what we talked about with the coconut milk and coconut cream and MCT oil, but... Uh, coffee may actually help promote weight management. Uh, so that's something I'm, especially as I get older, that's something I'm always uh, focused on. And uh, the other interesting thing was that there have been some studies uh, that it may protect different, not just the brain, but different parts of our body, different organs. And scientists are studying different organs and how coffee, caffeinated coffee may react uh, in the body and what it may, uh, in what ways it may be helpful for certain organs in our body. So there's, there's, at least there's some, for us coffee drinkers, there is some good news on the horizon. And so I do put coffee, because of these studies, in the healthy category. Uh, but something I want to mention to you about this coffee that I found at Aldi, and I know in the past, you know, we've chatted a lot about, you know, what we call the prepper pantry, uh, the extended pantry where we, we keep our backup perishable foods. You know, I talk to you a lot about the Four Corners pantry, our main working pantry where we keep non-perishable foods that we access on a daily basis, then our fridge, then our freezer, and then our extended pantry, or what we nickname the prepper pantry. I thought these coffees were so fantastic for our extended pantry because they're like bricks. They've been air sealed. They're not beans. Uh, normally, here I've got some of their or, uh, all, the, all the organic beans. The, this is already ground coffee but it's sealed very, very tightly like a brick. And then once you open it, the, the, you take this package off and then you open the inner lining, then you know, you'll, if you've ever bought coffee like this, you'll hear whoosh, and then it'll be very soft and you can start scooping it out. But this is beautifully protected from air. So if you wanna have some ground coffee on hand that is sealed really well, and this was an excellent buy, uh, I highly recommend picking some of this up. They had two varieties. They had the mild and then just a regular. But I think that this is perfect, uh, especially if you're kind of, as we go into the winter months and you're looking to maybe restock a few things in your extended or prepper pantry, I would highly recommend these, especially even if you have the beans and even if you have a manual grinder, sometimes depending on what the circumstances in your house, you know, say the weather's bad and maybe people in the house are also under the weather 
and you're just tired and you don't feel and maybe oh if you lose as I've shared with you you know we lost power uh, one winter you know because of the sto ice storms we had here in Texas and maybe you're just tired you're under the weather and you really don't even feel like using your manual grain grain I was gonna say grain grinder that too your manual coffee grinder uh, your coffee mill uh, you can just open one of these and start making your coffee uh, you know, I've shared with you, I have a lot of those emergency videos on how to prepare foods uh, when you have no electricity and may possibly no clean running water. And I have a list that I share with you, a grocery list, what to buy and keep in your emergency box. And I have a two-week meal plan for you. And this is all free. You can download this. Uh, no email required, nothing like that. I'll be sure to link to all of that below. Uh, and I show you how to, you know, have your bottled water on hand and then how to heat your water when you don't have any electricity. And then you can go ahead and with one of those little old fashioned coffee pots, you can make some coffee because I know that that was something I was really missing when we had no power. And I learned a lot of things from that. Uh, you know, we've been without power, you know, every once in a while, maybe in the summer, you have a little blackout because everybody's got their air conditioning going. But I was never with power for almost a whole week. You know, occasionally it would come on, you know, but then it would go off and it was really hit or miss. And it lasted almost a week uh, going on and on like that. And so it really made me realize things that were holes, in essence, that I was missing in my preparedness. And so I think just having some of this in, in your extended pantry, even put these in your uh, emergency meal box and with that meal plan and you've got your coffee and you're good to go. So some good scientific studies showing that coffee, you know, may actually provide some health benefits for us. And I know that that's a, a wonderful boon to those of us who like coffee and specifically caffeinated coffee. Next, I want to talk about tea. Now, Aldi has an amazing selection of tea and, and again, very reasonably priced. And e even at their regular price, you know, <clears throat> you don't necessarily have to worry about getting these on sale. But they've got green tea, which has a lot of health benefits we'll talk about in a minute. They've got, if you like a little flavor to it, they've got the green tea with lemon and ginseng. And then they've got, uh, here, they've got the Earl Grey. I like Earl Grey tea because it's flavored with bergamot. And bergamot is, they're sort of showing it here, it's, uh, it's funny, it looks green, it looks like a lime, uh, but I believe it's like a little closer if you smell it to orange. And I think it's a little closer, you know, to the orange family, but again, in the citrus family. But bergamot is wonderful for you. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, then I also wanted to show you their herb teas. They have ginger turmeric, great option. Ginger is really good for you. Turmeric is really good for you. I have a lot of videos where I show you how to make various, uh, I guess you could call them tonics, using ginger and turmeric, and they're very popular. And I'll be sure to link the playlist in the description below. Especially you may want to have those in your repertoire as we go into cold and flu season. And then also having some ginger and turmeric tea like this on hand, perfect. And then this one, if you ever have trouble sleeping, the herb chamomile uh, or chamomile, depending on how you say it, uh, offers wonderful benefits. And I have videos uh, where I talk to you, especially once we get through the colder weather and spring is upon us, I have videos where I share with you my favorite herbs to grow. And that's a very popular video. I'll, I, I definitely will put that in the description. And as I said, if I run out of room, always check the pinned comment. But in that video, I go over with you uh, my favorite herbs to grow. But then I also talk about some additional herbs that I add that I can't really grow here in Texas, in Central Texas, uh, that I add to my collection of herbs that I have dried. And I also share with you all of the health benefits of the different herbs. So if that's something that interests you, uh, I highly recommend you take a look at that video and you can kind of prepare for this spring. And also, definitely, if this is something that interests you, because I have a lot of information 
uh, on my YouTube channel and on my website uh, about the herbs that I like using, both for culinary as well as, you know, in tinctures and tonics and all of that. I highly recommend that you search out some books by Rosemary Gladstar. You can't go wrong with her. She is an amazing herbalist and she teaches, you know, all about herbs, how to grow them, how to use them, and how to make different preparations with them. You will love her books. Alrighty, now let's take a minute. We talked about coffee. Let's take a minute just to talk about some of the health benefits that we find in tea, both your black tea, the Earl Grey, and your green teas. Now like coffee, like so many of the foods we're talking about today, uh, these have been studied extensively by scientists. There are is so much information. If you go on to the internet uh, or you even read some of Rosemary Gladstar's books, there's so much information about tea. And in Rosemary's, it's more, you know, leaning to talking about the herb teas, but there's so much information about green tea. And I just want to read some of the various benefits that green tea can bring to your diet. Uh, if you enjoy green tea, you can drink it hot, you can drink it iced, whatever way you like it. But it contains a type of polyphenol. And these are like in the kind of in the antioxidant family. A polyphenol called catechin. I hope I'm saying that right. And catechins are antioxidants that help pre prevent cell damage. We talked about preventing cell damage before and why it's so important. We don't want oxidation to be taking place in our bodies. And that's why these are called antioxidants because they fight oxidation. We want to protect ourselves. We want ourselves to be healthy because damaged cells lead to disease. So we want to keep ourselves as healthy as possible. And so that is the really big thing that's studied with green tea. It's these catechins that help prevent cell damage. Because so often when you read about disease uh, that mo you know, modern human beings come down with, so much of it is linked to the fact related to oxidation, related to cell damage. And that's why when scientists discover foods and beverages, so herbs, whatever the case may be, that may slow down oxidation or even prevent oxidation, it becomes very interesting to them because that really is our main goal in, in, in protecting our bodies and protecting our health is to prevent oxidation. And this is something I'll share this with you because I suspect that if you read about green tea, you've read this, but if not, you'll find it very interesting. The most well-known and abundant catechin in green tea is, and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this, and I don't think many people do, it's usually abbreviated, so I'm gonna abbreviate it for you, but the most well-known and abundant catechin in green tea is EGCG, which research has found may be involved in, 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 may be involved in improving various health conditions or markers of disease. Now, there's a lot of more research that needs to be done on this, but traditional cultures have been drinking different types of tea, including green tea, for centuries, even longer. And so it definitely is something that is not only interested, interesting to scientists to study, but also just interesting to us as traditional food cooks and how we look at what traditional cultures consumed. And tea was a very popular uh, beverage. And so I think we can't go wrong when it comes to having this in our pantries and enjoying tea. Uh, so there's a whole host of things that not only link to being an antioxidant, but tea, like coffee, may be shown to link to improving brain function. There's just a whole host of things. So having some green tea in your pantry is going to be a very smart move. Now, black tea is very similar. Black tea, like green tea, is 
also rich in antioxidants. And scientists have been studying it uh, to follow its properties or to observe its properties that may be related to heart health as well as gut health. And you know I talk to you a lot about gut health and how uh, the relationship between the gut and the brain, or I gut, you know, we use that term, but our digestive system and our brain is very important. Gut health is linked to so many both health benefits as well as problem, health problems. Because if our gut is not healthy, scientists tell us we have a harder time absorbing nutrients from our food. And if we don't absorb nutrients from our food, those nutrients can't benefit us. They're basically just being flushed out of our system. And we don't want to do that. We want to be absorbing the nutrients from our food and, and we need a healthy gut to do that. And a healthy gut, as scientists tell us, makes for a healthier person. So there, there are a number of studies that are looking at black tea's potential benefit on helping with gut health. And I will share some of that information with you in the blog post. As, uh, and I definitely recommend that you read more about this if you like black tea. And definitely uh, consider including some in your pantry if coffee is something that's not interesting to you, but you can, uh, you can tolerate caffeine, definitely green tea has a little less and black tea has a little more. And so if, if you need a caffeinated beverage, you can't go wrong incorporating tea into your diet. Also, something I wanna to mention to you, if you like to make fermented foods, specifically fermented vegetables, I've shared with you how putting a two green tea bags or one black tea bag into the bottom of your jar before you add in your vegetables will help keep them crisp. But because I know so many of you have shared with me, you don't like fermented vegetables because you find them mushy. And I understand completely. But tannins, which is what's in tea, helps prevent that from happening and will help keep your fermented vegetables crisp. So be sure to check out my fermentation, vegeta my vegetable fermentation videos. Uh, where I show you how to use the tea bag, but it's basically very easy. You know, just pull off the the string and the little tab that's on a tea bag, put it in the bottom of your jar, put your vegetables in, add in your salted water brine, and you're going to be amazed at what a difference that's going to make without really adding any flavor or color. It, you'd be surprised. It doesn't, it, it's n nothing significant that you're going to notice. What you're gonna notice is that your carrot sticks or your, your pickles, whatever you're making, are crispy. And speaking of ferments, if that's something that interests you, I have a whole chapter in my new book, The Modern Pioneer Cookbook, all about fermentation. And I go into, you know, this, as I said, it's really a manual. It's got a lot of recipes in it, definitely. But every chapter is, has an extensive introduction on walking you through everything you need to know about that particular subject, such as fermentation. And I walk you through it very easily so that you can be very successful in creating high quality ferments. It's really a manual, as I mentioned earlier, for creating your traditional foods kitchen. And so it's something that I really hope that you will have on your bookshelf that you can easily access and refer to and also teach others. Because we wanna keep these traditional cooking skills alive. We don't want these things to be lost. We want to be not only enjoying them and creating our own traditional foods kitchen, we want to pass these skills on to our friends, our neighbors, our children, our grandchildren. It's very important because it allows us to be self-sufficient and not always be relying on buying a lot of processed foods. And I think that you will find today, as we're going through the foods that I'm sharing with you, the healthy foods to buy, a lot of these are individual ingredients, like the coffee, like the tea, like some of the other things that I've shared with you. The more simple 
the ingredients we can buy and then create our homemade versions of other products, especially like mayonnaise, which is so easy to make. I show you how to do this in my YouTube videos. It's very easy to make homemade mayonnaise and you can use high quality oil like olive oil. I show you that in my cookbook here, how to make an olive oil and egg mayonnaise because we want to get away from that highly processed soybean oil and how many mayonnaises at the grocery store are made with soybean oil. I mean, almost all of them. Can you find maybe some that are made with a little higher quality olive oil, maybe like an avocado oil, but they're very expensive and you can make this. And that's what I talk about in my book. You can make these things homemade for a lot less. And I teach you how to use every single little scrap in your kitchen to work toward creating a no waste kitchen. So always be thinking when you're shopping, when you're looking at food, say, okay, that can be the building block for something that I want to make homemade, like the olive oil. But when you look at the more processed foods, say to yourself, I think I can make that homemade with some of my basic building blocks for less than I can, uh, for less than what I, it's going to cost me to buy it already pre-prepared for me, and I'm going to make it with better, more wholesome ingredients. Now, as I shared with you, I like Earl Grey, and this is a black tea, and it's flavored with bergamot. Now, bergamot may be something that's relatively new to you. Uh, it's not something that we eat per se. It's often used as a flavoring or used to make essential oils because it's an extract of, and as I shared with you a little earlier, it's kind of in the orange family, but, or, or it comes from something that's in the orange family, but not something that we think of eating as an orange. It's basically a dwarf variety of the Seville orange, but if you've ever seen one and you can kind of tell a little on this box, it sort of looks like a lime. It's got green skin and a green interior, but it has a delightful aroma. And if you've ever used bergamot essential oil, uh, you will know uh, what I'm talking about. But bergamot is extracted from the rind of uh, this dwarf variety of Seville orange. And it is so flavorful. I love it in tea. And the reason that I also like to drink it is that bergamot, again, like so many, like herbs or essential oils or whatever the case may be, have been heavily studied uh, by scientists. And it's quite fascinating the different things that they will focus on and try to understand more about. And bergamot may show some early signs of helping with one's cholesterol levels. So again, so many of these things are like ongoing studies, ongoing uh, scientific examinations of many of the foods we're talking about today. It's always evolving and new information is becoming available to us. But Earl Grey has been drank for a very, drank, drank, <laughs> drank for a very long time. And again, you know, as I've shared with you before, as I say often in our traditional foods kitchens, using these things that have been used either for centuries, sometimes a millennia, you know, it, it's well worth incorporating those into our traditional foods kitchens. Not only the foods, but the proper preparation and so on and so forth. And if you've been with me for a while, you know I have many videos where I talk about this and I show you how to make a whole host of traditional foods, bone broth, ferments, like I say in the beginning of my videos, sourdough and more, uh, cultured dairy, uh, soaking and sprouting grains, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But it, that's why I like Earl Grey. This has been around for a while. And bergamot now, you know, it's really piqued the interest of scientists. And because they will see the people, you know, when they do these different dietary studies and they ask people, what do you eat? What do you drink? You know, and then they'll find that people who 
you know, maybe have a long life or maybe have been disease free or whatever the case may be. And then they look and see, well, what were these people eating and drinking and what was their lifestyle and so on and so forth. And so that eventually leads to scientists wanting to study the different foods they consumed or the lifestyles or study the lifestyles that they lived. And so one of those is Earl Grey tea. So uh, we'll definitely keep our eyes open uh, for what may be coming forward uh, with that. And as I already shared with you, chamomile has been extensively studied to help with sleep, uh, as well as a whole host of other uh, various conditions. Uh, but something I do want to mention about chamomile, if you have hay fever, be very careful about consuming chamomile tea. Uh, because or any kind of herbal preparations made with it, uh, because it can cause a reaction if you if you tend to uh, be uh, be a person who does struggle with those type of hay fever re related allergies. And then with ginger and turmeric, I love this because taking I just love teas and I love the idea of using herbal teas because they're very gentle and ginger and turmeric again I mean oh my gosh how long have humans been consuming ginger and turmeric either individually or together uh, this goes way back in history and so I think that enjoying some of this, you know, especially I don't take half, you know, as I said, I love my coffee, but one, two cups in the morning and that's it. And I don't take a lot of caffeine again, uh, during the rest of the day, unless, uh, you know, I just feel something that I want to enjoy. You know, uh, I might in, enjoy some iced tea or something like that. That's made with black tea, but uh, for the most part, I do have like a cutoff where I don't want to take too much caffeine because I don't want it to disrupt my sleep. And so it's so nice to have things like this uh, that are just loaded with antioxidants. Ginger and turmeric are wonderful anti-inflammatory uh, ingredients, uh, antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. I, the list of good things that ginger and turmeric can offer to us really gets to the point where it's almost endless. There's like nothing, there's nothing that you can say bad about these things. The only thing that I will say is, as I mentioned, I like the idea of taking these in tea form because they are gentle and easy for our body to absorb. I'm not a fan of taking like ginger, capsules or turmeric capsules, I find that can be very hard on my stomach. And that's not something that traditional cultures would have been doing. I always like to look to how do traditional cultures consume these different herbs and spices, whatever the foods, whatever the case may be. And turmeric is wonderful uh, to use in various recipes because when you cook turmeric with a fat and with black pepper, it becomes very easy to absorb. So again, see, we're going back to the fat and the fat helping the absorption of a particular ingredient, in this case, turmeric. So you can uh, take some turmeric, even the ground, dried turmeric, it's totally fine. And you can cook that, uh, make like basically a paste with some butter that you've melted in a saucepan, put in some black pepper, maybe add in some cauliflower uh, that you've steamed, toss that up. You have a wonderful, delicious and nutritious dish. Number nine, artichoke hearts. And I was so happy to see these at Aldi packed in water. Now they did have them packed in oil and I'm not even really sure what type of oil it was, if it was soybean oil or something else. Uh, but whatever it was, I remember myself not being pleased with that option, but I was pleased when I found them packed in water. Now why artichoke hearts? Of course, they're high in fiber, so that always aids in digestion, but they're actually very rich in vitamins and minerals. Scientists are studying the antioxidant properties that are in artichokes, and they think that they may be linked 
to lower blood sugar levels, improve digestion, improved heart health, and improved liver health. Now these are all ongoing studies that they'll be looking into and reporting on, uh, but it is interesting that scientists now are very interested in the antioxidant properties that are contained in artichoke hearts. And Artichoke hearts, like many of the things we've been talking about, have been eaten for a very long time by traditional cultures. Artichoke hearts, as I mentioned, are very rich in vitamins and minerals, and they're high in fo folate, folic acid, which we also talked about earlier. It's one of the B vitamins, and always beneficial to our system to be ref not refurbishing, <laughs> replenishing uh, vi the B vitamins into our bodies, into our digestive systems, because they are water soluble. Uh, artichoke hearts are also rich in vitamin C, and they include a whole host of minerals, including magnesium, which again, it's a nice complement to calcium. We want to make sure we have enough magnesium in our diet. They're also rich in potassium. We talked about potassium as a good balance to sodium. And they're rich in phosphorus. That's another mineral uh, that is important to our diets, but one we've not really talked about uh, before. But we have, I'll read through everything. Uh, they have, as I mentioned, the, the folate, the folic acid, copper, magnesium, vitamin C, niacin, that's a B vitamin, riboflavin, a B vitamin, potassium, phosphorus, and B6. So why is having phosphorus in our diets important? The reason is this mineral works in conjunction with magnesium and calcium to keep our bones strong. So next time, at your, next time you're at Aldi, be sure to pick up some artichoke hearts. They're wonderful in salads. They're wonderful if you like to do those things that I often refer to as a charcuterie platter. They're very common today called boards where you put out some nice meats and sliced meats and cheeses. Having some artichokes is on a platter like that is wonderful. And you can even toss them. These are, you know, packaged in water. So you can drain this water and then you can toss them in olive oil and vinegar, and you can use some of your homemade apple cider vinegar if you've made that with me. I have a three-part video series where I show you how to make it just using apple scraps or maybe some apples that are a little past their prime. Maybe you got them in a windfall, something like that. But you can toss these with your own uh, olive oil and vinegar and then put them on a charcuterie platter. And what's nice about that is having artichoke hearts with the meats and the cheeses since they've, they're high in fiber and then you've tossed them with something that contains vinegar can help aid digestion and make the meats and cheeses easier to digest. So definitely look for these. Every time I've been to Aldi, I've seen these. So hopefully they are at your Aldi. And again, look for those. Make sure you read the back or I don't know if it's on the front. Uh, I don't think it's on the front. I think you do have to look on the back. Make sure you pick the ones that are packed in water. Now, I just want to mention before we jump forward to number 10, I have a couple of bonus healthy foods for you. So be sure to stay tuned for those. This holiday season, give the gift of stories and recipes with my new book, The Modern Pioneer Cookbook, available everywhere books are sold. Number 10, beans, lentils, and peas. Now, Aldi is amazing when it comes to beans, lentils, and peas. They have a fantastic selection, both canned and dried. When it comes to shopping at Aldi, they have a great selection of both canned beans and peas, as well as refried beans, which we'll talk about in a minute. And they have a great selection of dried beans, dried lentils, and dried green split peas. Now these are all great sources of protein and should definitely be in your pantry. And having both the dried and the canned are very good ideas because as I've shared with you, I often talk about multiple streams of food. Sometimes we've not gotten around to soaking our beans and maybe sprouting them if we want to take the extra step or soaking our lentils or soaking our, our split peas, whatever the case may be. 
And having canned varieties on hand can be very helpful and make meal prep easy so we're not tempted to you know, kind of, as I've often said, like drive through the fast food line or something like that. Having multiple streams of food where you know that you have some things that are easy to make can really be your lifeline as you're creating your traditional foods kitchen. For example, over here I've got the great northern beans and I think somewhere I've got the, if you think down here, oh yes, I've got the cannellini beans. Either of these white beans are great for making the soup that I've showed you how to make called greens and beans. I mean, it can just become a clean out the crisper soup, literally. If you've got some lettuce, it's traditionally made with escarole, but if you've got some lettuce that's looking a little past its prime, I have often made beans and greens with a whole host of different types of greens. Uh, so definitely having something like this in your pantry can allow you to pull a meal together very quickly. We'll talk about the dried ones and the dried op options in a minute, but I also want to mention that Aldi's has canned peas. And peas, again, another, you know, beans are high in protein, lentils are high in protein, peas are high in protein, all wonderful sources of protein. But I know some of you have said to me, Mary, canned peas. But I've got to tell you, I, I just love these warmed and whirled either in a blender or a food processor. And then you add some butter and my sweet friends across the pond. Uh, I believe you call that mushy peas when they're prepared in that way. I learned that uh, from Nigella Lawson, which is one of my favorite, you know, home cooks slash chefs, TV chefs, whatever, and cookbook authors. I really enjoy her. But uh, I had the pleasure of visiting your wonderful country across the pond, and it seemed like so many places where we would grab a bite to eat always seem to have a side of mushy peas. And I just couldn't get enough of them. I love them. And yes, you know, make them with fresh peas and all of that is wonderful. But if you're craving those and you want to make them with canned peas and some butter and some sea salt, you serve that as a side dish. If there are people in your family who like peas, and even if they don't, I think they're going to like mushy peas. You know, butter makes everything taste better. So, <laughs> but... Uh, so don't turn your nose up. These are high in protein. But let's take a minute to talk about the variety of uh, dried uh, beans, lentils, and peas that Aldi has. They've got some great green lentils, wonderful lentil soup. You can even cook these and serve them as a side dish in place of something like rice. Uh, again, here you've got your split peas. You can turn these into a wonderful split pea soup. And then the variety of beans they have is terrific. Now, I've just got pintos here, I've got black beans, and I've got, what do I've got over here? Uh, great, the great northern beans. Sorry if some of these are, I think, might be out of the camera view. But Aldi has a fantastic selection, and they're all very reasonably priced. And something, we're gonna talk about the dried beans in a minute, as well as the lentils, but I just wanna take a second. I think I may have already shared with you uh, about the refried beans. Uh, don't pass these up. If you think you don't like re refried beans, it may be, and again, these are very high in protein, it may be because you didn't have them traditionally prepared. I wanted to mention that because I might have left that out earlier. If you uh, have had them made with processed oils, they're not going to be very tasty, and they may almost take on like that rancid flavor. But if you have refried beans made with real lard, it's a, it's a whole nother dish. And uh, so definitely consider adding those um, into your diet. Now, I want to mention to you, you, I have a video where I show you how to soak beans and then if you want to take them the extra step and sprout them. But I show you how to cook beans properly. Sometimes in the comments, I think people might have misunderstood a little it's, I, I'm showing you, I happen to be using pinto beans in the example. I'm not making pinto beans like as a dish. I have recipes for that, which I, I'll share with you, but I'm not making pinto beans as a dish. I'm simply using the pinto beans as an example of how to soak and cook any bean 
which you then will go and use in any recipe that may be calling for beans. I show you what to do with any type of bean, what it would be like if you were opening a can of beans. So, and I'll explain, I'll, I'll show here in the cookbook uh, on, if you have my cookbook chapter, oh, it's page one, 156. I show you how to soak brine and cook dried beans for use in any recipe. And this is a very important skill to learn if you, sorry, I think I'm blocking everything, but this is a very important skill to learn if you like to buy dry beans because learning how to soak beans and then brine them and potentially sprout them and cook them is a very important traditional food skill. And that's why I was saying that this book is very much a manual because I do, you know, I, I have all the recipes and whatnot for making different types of, of dishes, but I also have a lot of the how-to step-by-step uh, instructions for taking basic single ingredients properly preparing them in the traditional way so that then so that they then can go and be used in whatever recipe you want to use them in also when you turn the page and you go to page 158 which would make sense you know, <laughs> uh, i have how to sprout beans lentils and whole grains and I also, on the other re the recipe next to it, I have how to soak and dry nuts for better digestion. But I teach you how to sprout these beans and sprout these lentils and to sprout whole grains. Now, I've not seen whole grains at Aldi, but we've talked a lot about stocking whole grains. And why do we want to sprout them? We want to sprout them because if we're not making something like a sourdough where we're not soaking, uh, in essence, our flour and then baking with it, because of the phytic acid, it can make it more difficult for us to absorb the nutrients in whole grains. Whole grains contain something called phytic acid. Now, phytic acid has a good side too. It's an antioxidant. And when you deactivate some of the phytic acid, you don't deactivate all of it through the sourdough process, just some of it. So you get the best of both worlds when you're working with whole grains. You deactivate some of the phytic acid, which allows you to absorb the nutrients from the whole grains and prevent it from stripping too many nutrients out of your body. But then you also get its antioxidant benefit. So uh, learning how to sprout uh, beans and lentils, whole grains, this is very important, especially if you say, well, I don't really want to do sourdough or I'm not ready to do sourdough. I'm still learning sourdough. Soaking and sprouting beans, lentils, and grains is very easy to do. And then once you've soaked and sprouted them, you can dry them and then you can go ahead and grind them into flour. And that's what I show you here, how to make sprouted flour with lentils or whole grains. And the same rules apply to beans. I'm specifically discussing in this recipe how to make a flour with lentils and whole grains uh, that you've soaked and sprouted and then how to go on and bake with sprouted flour to make those breads that are very similar to those Ezekiel type breads. And I have that recipe, uh, not for an Ezekiel bread, but my own version of a sprouted flour bread uh, that is very digestible, lower on the glycemic index, and does allow you to enjoy a bread without going through the sourdough process. So I think you'll find that if you have the book, you know, you've all left me so many wonderful comments. I really appreciate it that you're so pleased with it. And I, if this is something that interests you, uh, definitely uh, take a look at that uh, recipe in my book. And uh, definitely, if you don't already have the book, think about maybe adding it to your bookshelf. Thank you very much. And yes, beans are high in protein, but they're also high in lots of vitamins and minerals, not to mention fiber. And when it comes to minerals, they're specifically high in potassium, 
which again, we like that to balance out our sodium levels, and they're high in calcium that help work with magnesium and phosphorus to create strong bones. Bonus number one, some healthy breakfast options. Aldi has these wonderful old-fashioned rolled oats, but even better, they have steel-cut oats. And if you have not seen my video yet on how to make oat groats into oatmeal, definitely look at that because that'll show you also that you can do it using steel cut oats. You don't need the whole oat groat. The steel cut oat will work the same way. You soak them overnight and the next day, it's just 10 minutes to cook them. Then you can go ahead and top them with some nuts. Of course, being a Texan, I'm gonna have pecans. And Aldi also has real maple syrup and it was a good price. So be sure to check out all of these as healthy food breakfast options. Bonus number two, if you've not had a chance to make your own bone broth or you've just run out, it's always smart, again, thinking multiple streams of food to keep some broth on your shelf. And this is a wonderful chicken broth. This is part of the Simply Nature line at Aldi and it's organic. And so definitely think about this because as we talked about with the pasta, you can take your white rice and Aldi has some wonderful basmati rice. Certainly if you shop the big box stores and you can buy it in bulk, it'll be less expensive, but this still was very affordable. You can cook your basmati in your broth with your butter and your sea salt and you've created something that's more nutritious. Now, in this line of talking about grains, Aldi also had quinoa and you can cook your quinoa the same way. You can cook it in your broth. Is quinoa high in protein and nutritious? nutritious? Yes, but you can make it even more nutritious and more digestible by cooking it in broth. And then back here, I just have a little sneak. <laughs> I've just got some of their Simply Nature organic chicken noodle soup again. Do we make our own noodles, chicken noodle soup? Of course. Do we make it homemade with chicken that we pulled off the last little bits and bobs off of a carcass of a roast chicken? Yes. However, as we go into cold and flu season, you don't necessarily know what your own personal situation will be. And if you're the chief cook and bottle washer like me, and you may not be up to making a homemade soup if you come down with a cold or the flu, multiple streams of food having a little chicken noodle soup on your pantry shelf can save the day. So definitely look for these, bonus number two. Bonus number three is something very unusual, at least it was unusual for me to find. At Aldi, they have these organic, again, they're Simply Nature line, of these stirring pastes. Now, I was really impressed with this red pepper one because it's basically just red peppers and a variety of herbs. So, and red peppers, very rich in vitamin C, and so you can just squirt this right into a soup, a stew, whatever you're making, and you'll have your wonderful red pepper taste along with a bunch of herbs and spices. Herbs and spices are always good for our health. You can never go wrong. And the fact that this is organic and part of their Simply Nature line is definitely a, a, a healthy food to have on your pantry shelf. Bonus number four, peanut butter. And again, part of their Simply Aldi's Simply Nature line and it's organic and I love this because this is just organic peanuts and sea salt. And you can see the peanut oil from the peanuts is floating on the top. You're gonna to have to stir this in. That's how you wanna buy peanut butter. And I will tell you, when we were without power and we had no heat, and I was really, as I shared with you earlier, learning my way about how to be better prepared in very cold weather, which is not something that's common here in Central Texas, but I had a lot of peanut butter and my husband and I enjoyed this on crackers. And now we always say, make sure we have a couple of jars of peanut butter in the pantry, just in case. <laughs> and so this is a wonderful uh, item. It's very affordable. And if peanuts agree with you, be sure to stock some of the Aldi peanut butter. This is very well made. And as I said, peanuts and sea salt, that's perfect. Bonus number five, dark chocolate and this is 70% cacao. And that is the type of dark chocolate you wanna look at 
for health benefits because chocolate, like coffee and so many things, has been extensively studied by scientists. And you will often read that it has various antioxidants, properties and nutrients in it that are beneficial to our health. That's music to the ears of chocolate lover like me, as well as I know you, many of you are too. But also chocolate is rich in magnesium. And magnesium, we've been talking a lot about it being helpful to our bones. Magnesium is also helpful to our hearts. And so you are seeing a lot of studies now where scientists are looking at the effect of magnesium on the heart and it being helpful to the heart. And the good news is chocolate has magnesium in it. But scientists and, and nutritionists will recommend that you make sure that your chocolate isn't loaded with sugar and is instead more loaded with the cacao or the, the cocoa powder, the cocoa butter. And so make sure that you look for, for chocolate that's 70% uh, cacao or higher. And so Aldi's has a great selection of chocolate and I was very pleased to see this one with a good number. Number six, whole grain style crackers. These crackers are terrific. They're very limited in their ingredients, but the ingredients that they're made from are very healthful. This has a lot of dried fruit in it. This has a lot of seeds in it, and you can't go wrong. And so if you're looking for crackers, be sure to check these out at Aldi. And I've had both of these. They're both tasty. These are wonderful on a charcuterie platter at holiday time. And these are just great for any time. You can put uh, cheese on these. I mean, I mean, you could put these on a charcuterie platter as well. Uh, but what I love about these is I have to read you the ingredients because they're, it's just terrific. The first ingredient is sunflower seeds, then sesame seeds, then wholemeal rye flour. Rye flour is very nutritious. And then they've got oats and flax seeds and spelt and sea salt and thyme. That is it. Oh, and oregano. Let me not leave out the oregano. And that's it. I mean, you can't, I, I, even, and they were very affordable. To make crackers like this might be challenging. Now I show you how to make crackers uh, both on you know on my website and my YouTube channel and in my cookbook uh, that are nice rolled ones that you slice and they're relatively easy to make. I use a sourdough discard uh, for one type in my book, uh, but. Even so, even if you have those, just being able to have a variety of crackers, because these would take a little more challenge, you know, collecting all of these seeds and so on and so forth, and this, all the dried fruit, and nuts and seeds that are in these, and yet they're already made for you, and they're re relatively affordable. So these are perfect, I think, for holiday time, but really any time that you want a healthful cracker, as opposed to just eating something from the store that's gonna be laden with white flour and processed oils. Now, if you want to see more things that I've purchased at Aldi, and how to use the foods you buy to make lots of delicious, nutrient-rich and nutrient-dense meals, be sure to click on this video over here. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.